My name is Keith Argus, Battalion Chief with Chandler Fire Health and Medical Department, and I'm also the functioning emergency manager for the city. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about preparedness, specifically preparedness in your home. Now the federal government and the state recommend three main components of preparedness. Those are be informed, make a plan, and build a kit. Today we're going to focus on building a kit, a kit that's going to function in your home to help keep yourself and your family safe in case there's a natural or man-made disaster. Now this kit is basically a bare bones skeleton version of what you should have in your home for a readiness kit. Now the idea of a readiness kit is 72 hours of sustainability. The purpose of that 72 hour kit is to ensure that your family safe has the essential needs to survive for three days without needed assistance from rescue providers. Now remember, 911 and first responders, we're on our way. We're there, we're gonna be working, and we're gonna be addressing the most affected areas, but sometimes our progress can be impeded in getting to you. So the best thing you can do is ensure your own safety for, a few, for the first few days until we can arrive. So in order to do that, you wanna build a kit. Now you can keep your kit in a backpack, small suitcase, duffel bag, or in your uh, pantry or closet. But a kit's got some major components, some things that have to be in there. First are the survivable essentials. That's food and that's water, okay? This kit, as you can see, is made to be very small and transportable. In here we have water. That's these small little pouches here. We also have food. These are rations, they're cubes. They carry high calorie count and essential vitamins. These are excellent for a kit. However, I would recommend stepping up the water significantly from this survivable amount to a more sustainable amount. And what's recommended is a gallon per person per day. That will cover your drinking needs as well as any sanitation needs. I really like these compressed cube um, MRE type food. They're small, they're compact, they last about five years, they're fairly inexpensive, they deliver high calories, very small area, so it's nice for a kit. It's perfect for that. If you decide to store perishables, canned goods, remember a can opener in your kit. Also in the kit we have a few pieces of safety equipment like some gloves, eye protection. These are important if the event happens to damage your home. You may need to be working outside, protecting your residents, securing your home. Um, so these are nice things to have inside your kit. Um, we also have the version of shelter, which are emergency blankets. These are excellent for the winter. Here in Arizona, we don't have uh, significant uh, cold weather events down in the valley. If you're outside, if you have a home up in the north part of the, part of the state, you're gonna need more uh, cold weather clothing than just that. But this kit comes with some survival blankets, which is a great place to start. In addition, we have some ponchos, okay, for those weather events. We are prone to flooding in the area. We can get Pacific hurricanes that push up some significant weather events. Poncho's a great thing to have in there. Also in this kit is a flashlight. Critical component, this one is battery driven. Remember extra batteries if you're gonna put a standard flashlight. And then there's a first aid kit. Okay, this, as you can see by the size, is very small, but this one has the basic needs. I'm gonna give you some, uh, some other ideas of additional items that I would put in my kit at home, or I would recommend to you to put in your kit. First one I'll re-reference is the water. More water is appropriate, gallon per person per day. In addition to that, I would recommend at least a quart of bleach or iodine tablets. Bleach is very versatile. Um, it's inexpensive, it's easy to get, lasts a long time. But uh, 16 drops of bleach in one gallon of water will sanitize it and make it drinkable. You have to let it sit for 30 minutes, let the bleach kill the organisms that are inside, and you can drink it. Iodine tablets work the same way. But bleach also can be mixed nine parts water, one part bleach, or a 10% mixture for sanitation. So it's an excellent disinfectant and sanitizer. So it's very versatile, great thing to have in your kit. In addition, some additional clothing. I would recommend a change of clothes for each person. Um, pants, long sleeve shirts. I would recommend that you add any diapers or infant formula if you have small ones. Prescription medications if you have prescription needs animal food and water. So you have to prepare for our pets. It's important that they have food and water there. Some other items that you can add to your kit could be uh, cashier's checks or cash. We could add into our kit a hand crank radio. I think it's very important that you're able to get and receive information. We rely heavily on our cell phones, but now you can easily find out on the open market uh, hand crank radios and chargers. It has a hand crank so they're not battery operated and you can charge your cell phone. Cell phones are a great way to communicate, but remember, 
That can't be your only means of communication. Cell phone towers can get knocked out in significant weather or even with heavy traffic. So in an emergency event, even if the cell phone towers aren't damaged, the amount of calling can overwhelm the towers and knock out cell phone coverage. So a good idea to have in your kit is an old style phone. Those phones like a rotary phone do not require electricity to work. The phone line delivers enough electricity to carry the phone signal and you can make and receive calls. So that's very important. For a great list of kit materials and recommended additional items, you should visit ready.gov and see FEMA's website. They have an amazing amount of information there that's easily accessible, easy to understand, and really will help you develop a disaster plan, a kit, and learn how to be informed in your home if disaster strikes.